Hi, I'm Jonathan Oxer and this is Walk Time Blog number 17. I'm here at LCA with Matt Evans. G'day Matt. Hi, hello. Yesterday you did a talk about repurposing hardware. Would you like to give us a brief rundown of that? Sure. Okay, so it's repurposing everyday devices is, is the message. We've got all sorts of obsolete equipment lying around. We have devices that we buy as new toys six months ago. They were new, now they're obsolete. They're sitting in our drawers. So my message is to take things apart, work out how they work, repurpose those, design something new with existing devices. As software people, we're very used to doing this. We're very used to playing around inside the compiler or making the kernel do something that it doesn't already do. And as hardware people, I, I, I don't see so much of this as a community-wide thing, so I'd like people to just give it a go. It's, it's that sort of message. Excellent. Um, the way I often explain this to people is to see the entire world as if it's made of Lego. So don't see things as immutable, see them as right. building blocks and things that you can repurpose and make it into something different. Yeah. Is that pretty much the way you see things? Yeah, that, I agree with that. All well, things are already made of Lego, and they themselves have got lots of constituent parts that you can, you know, you can either take an old TV and take it parts out of it, or you can use the bigger building blocks and use a whole decoder board or video driver or something, so, yeah. Okay, great. Um, so what would be, um, yeah, could you give an example of an interesting project that you've done repurposing some existing hardware? Okay, so a, a lot of the examples are, are quite esoteric, just because I, I find making my life difficult interesting. So I'll, I'll take something that's pretty much as obscure as possible and try and work out how it works just for the challenge of it. Um, an example would be I had an old development card that I found in a junk shop years and years ago and um, didn't know anything about it except it had an FPGA on it. And so there was lots of quite painstaking reverse engineering of just, just the circuit board. So it's, it's quite a repetitive piece of work rather than a massive invention, but figuring out where all the pins for the FPGA went, once you know that, you can then solder new things onto them. I ended up attaching uh, an old computer monitor, a big LCD panel onto this FPGA board. So what I'd really done was I made my own development board, which is, mm -hmm. if you divide your time down, you know, and, and charge yourself out to yourself, then it, it's not really worth it. You know, a development mm -hmm. board for an FPGA is under 100 bucks these days. Mm -hmm. But it was an interesting thing to do and to, to learn how, how they put the board together. Mm -hmm. And also just to, you know, have that little warm glow of I've reused something and saved it from the bin, basically, saved it from, from going into landfill. Yeah, and the other thing I find is that doing that sort of project um, teaches you about things that you wouldn't have ever expected. Right. It's really only when you get hands-on with something that you discover things that aren't covered in the documentation and um, right. techniques that, uh, that you can derive from trying new things for the first time. Right. And so most of the time when we do projects, they're not because we know already how to do them or what the outcome's going to be. Almost all of my projects are experiments. And so in my talk, I showed a whole bunch of projects, which none of them started out as, I will definitely get this working and I know this is going to be the right way to do it. It all just started out as a... I'll hack this together and see if it works. And mm. you'd be surprised, a lot of the time, stuff does work. And mm. it's a lot of people seem to be sort of steered off by some of the more complicated hacks because they see them and go, oh, well, there's a massive difference from the starting point and there's this elaborate thing. It's, it's a, an organic thing, it grows that way. I didn't start out at the beginning knowing how it would end up, and that's kind of the art of it in a way. You end up making this, this sort of exploration, but a physical exploration. Yeah, it's going, with, going with the flow, not really having a predefined right. plan necessarily. Spend a Sunday afternoon doing something and see what it turns into, and then maybe the next Sunday afternoon you go, oh, cool, well, that was nice. Now what else can I solder onto this mm. board to make it do something else? So, yeah, there's a logical progression. But, Excellent. Yeah. Um, so what interesting things have you seen at LCA? Like, what, is there anything in particular that stands out for you this year? I liked a lot of the embedded stuff. There seemed to be uh, a, a, a big, an amount of uh, freedom-related stuff as well. So you know, freedom of information and uh, your own personal freedom. So the keynotes about the tour project and um, uh, some of VDL stuff about Freedom Box. That sort of stuff was very interesting. And we've covered those at previous conferences. But it's it's good to see that there's it's, the traction is increasing on those sorts of mm. things as well. Yeah, there's certainly uh, a major focus on that now. Right. Right. Excellent. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you very much, Matt. Yeah, you're it's welcome. It's been great to meet you. Oh, it's been a pleasure. Thanks. Bye.